Welcome, everybody, to On the Ice here on ASTV, brought to you by Dokes Bulk Fuels and Case Financial Group. We'd like to welcome Mr. Craig Geeky. Now, his name may sound familiar because there's a Morgan Geeky that plays with the Carolina Hurricanes and the Chicago Wolves in the AHL. There's a Connor Geeky that plays with the Western Hockey League's Winnipeg Ice, who will start play later on this weekend, as well as a Noah Geeky that was playing with the Swin Swan Valley Stampeders but chose to stead to play a summer sport because, hey, what can you say? Winnipeg weathers, Manitoba winters, they aren't the nicest. They aren't the proudest, and they certainly aren't the prettiest. So he's going to play some ball this year, and he started up his season just a couple of weeks ago. So Craig's going to chat with us about raising three amazing sons at great sports, as well as being a tremendous father and supporting them in all of their dreams and seeing them come true. So please welcome Craig Geeky on the ice. Well, Craig, I hope you got ready to play hockey after hearing that one. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. You feel? Doing fantastic. The snow is melting. It's gorgeous. It's going to be a great season for the farmers. You just need some rain. Wouldn't you agree? A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm in that industry. So hopefully we can get uh, a little bit of rain to go along with the sunshine that we got here today. Speaking of rain, Craig, or speaking of water, I got to ask you, what is it that you're putting in the water to have your three boys play such amazing sports out of Strathclair, Manitoba, of all places. <laughs> you know what? There's probably probably a, a lot that goes Park into it. One, um, sorry about that. Line one. Uh, there's probably a whole pile that goes into it uh, that, um, to me, is is a little bit of everything. And I mean, uh, from grandparents helping them to get to, to where they need to go, um, you know, a wife that's understanding. Toby is uh, an athlete in, in in her own right and probably gets overlooked at how good of an athlete she was, uh, you know, going to school. So, again, in a small community field, um, you know, we well, – I, I forget what it is. It's probably 130 people in Strathclair. You know, we've got a K to 12 school. If you don't play all the sports, there's no sports. So, in other words, you know what? Everybody played everything, and <clears throat> that's how Toby and I grew up. Um, and we just supported them and everything. And it wasn't specific to hockey. We just, we wanted to build, um, uh, you know, good people and, uh, and good athletes. And, and by playing everything, that's kind of what we lucked out at. And like you said, playing, you had to play every sport. I mean, even with the boys growing up, hockey was still seasonal. I mean, yeah. I don't think there was ice in July, was there? So, I mean, you were picking up baseball bats, golf clubs, soccer balls are getting kicked around. 100%, Theo. I mean, um, they, they played badminton. They played volleyball. They played basketball. And a lot of them went to, in fact, all of them went to some sort of provincial in a lot of those sports like volleyball and basketball and badminton. And, and again, we weren't – it wasn't our goal to, you know, to, to get them – you know, to the, to the highest level. We just wanted them to, you know, go out and have some fun, work hard. Obviously that was a big, uh, a big stickler for Toby and I be accountable. Right. And, but just, just go and be the best you can be, be at whatever sport. And with three boys, Theo, I mean, the, 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 the holes in the wall, the, the, you know, the holes in the shed, the, you know, the fights, the scraps, we, we, we look at the, the kids, actually, we have a group chat and there's one video that I wish I could show the world because it really emulated what coming home to our house was like. I mean, they were playing ball hockey in the middle of summer and it got heated and, uh, and it was, it's funny, but that's the way it was. And, and so you just, you know, you just did that. And, um, you know, like I said, a lot of it had to do with grandma and grandpa and, you know, uh, getting them to where they need to go, and we just it, it just worked. It certainly did work because you've got three tremendous athletes, multi-sport athletes, and as much as I want to stress, and I've always stressed in my episodes on the ice here, as much as we talk about hockey, we're seeing a lot more athletes prove that a multi-sport cross-training environment truly develops not only the development of each sport, but the character off the ice or off this, you know, whatever surface they're playing. Uh, when it comes to 
having those opportunities, Craig, was it hard for the kids to say, okay, well, the ice is out. What are we going to do next? I mean, was it, did they, did you have to enforce something or endorse a sport? They just wanted to go do that. Didn't they? Right. As soon as it, like we had a, uh, we've got a basketball net in the driveway. Uh, we walk two blocks to the school where there's a, you know, a basketball court outside. And, um, you know what, as soon as, as soon as it's nice out, the, the boys are outside, you know, they're either swinging, uh, the golf club, you know, practicing their chip shots, you know, going to the, going to the ball diamonds. Uh, we've got a, a batting cage, you know, again, at the, at the ball diamonds, Theo. So like I said, there was nothing to me that really, uh, Toby or I had to, you know, force them to do. We just, we just let them kind of do their own thing. And, uh, again, Toby and I grew up playing everything. Same idea. We, we went to the same school and, and we, we did everything. We played all sports. And I, I'm not saying it's for everybody. And we couldn't, could not have done this without being in a small community. Uh, like Toby managed, I coached, and we didn't, we didn't try to run it. We just let things progress. If it overlapped with somebody else's game, well, so be it. But with that said, everybody played. A lot of times we had, you know, uh, 10 skaters, you know, for hockey. We had 10 ball players. We had, you know, um, 10 soccer players, you know, and it just, if it wasn't everybody playing, there was no sports. And so you just did that. You just signed them up. And again, the, the cost effectiveness, effectiveness in a, a rural setting is substantially less than in the big city. So it allowed us to do everything. Like I said, we, we used to pay I think it was like 25 bucks for each kid to play ball. And, and like, how can you go wrong? Well, what else are you going to do? So just like you said, Theo, we, we didn't have ice and it didn't really matter. As soon as, as soon as the ice was done and out at Strathclair, we were moving on to the next thing. And, you know, hopefully they, they chose a passion that they want to go down. And yeah, we got, we got two hockey players and a ball player, but like I said, you can put a golf club in their hand. You could put a volleyball in their hand, a badminton racket, and they'll be fine. Well, I remember seeing a story several months ago that Connor is not too shabby hitting the ball as well. And I know I spoke with him a couple of springs ago, and there was an article about him potentially getting some looks at, as well as his brother Noah, in the upcoming MLB drafts. We'll talk about that maybe a little bit later, but I want to go back to the hockey scene. I mean, you talk about the holes in the wall, you know, the Donnie Brooks that happened on the front street, you know, the posts that get dented. Was Morgan the trendsetter for the other two saying, okay, I'm going to play this sport called hockey and maybe my brothers will follow suit? Or was it just he just gravitated to it and the other two boys just followed and did the same thing? I, I like that question, Theo. I think it's um, – I think they're their own individual, number one. We never, again, Toby and I, we never pressured them into ball or hockey or whatever because – you know, to me, at the, at those ages, you're never going to get them to go to the rink if you're going to push them. So we just let them do and migrate what they wanted to do. And one of the stories I love telling was uh, when Morgan got drafted he, he uh, to the Western League, Tri-Cities took him, and um, uh, that um, spring – or, sorry, that fall, um, he ended up playing um, – Bantam Nationals in uh, Vaughan, Ontario, I believe, for baseball. And so that uh, national tournament was on the same weekend as uh, Tri-Cities um, camp. And it was a no-brainer for us. So we thought we would get a little bit of flack from Bob Torrey and, and the crew out there, you know, being a draft pick, and he wasn't going to go. Well, Bob Torrey was absolutely phenomenal. Theo, he literally says, he's, oh, my God, you know what? You need to go. This is a, a national event. And ultimately, to me, that was the that was a turning point for Morgan. Like, he just – he came home, and, and he had a lot of success out there, um, like a lot, um, but came home and said, you know what, Dad? He says, uh, I really, really, really like baseball. And we're thinking, oh, okay, you know, and he kind of sits down, throws his glove down, but I love hockey. So that was kind of the turning point. Noah, we always kind of knew that he would gravitate to baseball. Wasn't as if he was better 
or worse on either sport, he just – you would see his eyes light up for that player when when it's December. You know, you could ask him if he wants to throw the ball in the gym and he would just light up the off, you know, ready to go. You could do that same thing in May or June about hockey and he'd kind of go, well, yeah, okay. But – uh, you know what? If he had to, he would. With Connor, same idea. They they all kind of grew up just doing the, you know, the the summer sports and and the winter sports and doing what they could. And a lot of them played, like I said, all of them played actually volleyball and and basketball all throughout the hockey season. So it was it was a busy busy grind for them. So to to be a trailblazer, yeah, Morgan definitely. Um, probably had it tougher because he didn't have anybody to to follow. So he was, you know, making decision going out west. Um, you know, as a 17 year old, you know, Noah was a big decision because he was either going to be, you know, in the MJ or the Western League. But he chose ball, and that was a that's a tough decision when you're, you know, 16, 17 years old to make that call. Feel with Connor, again, we just kind of knew that you know, he would probably gravitate to hockey just by looking at his passions. But again, he's not going to, he's not going to not play ball. Like even this year, he's, he's probably going to try out for team Manitoba again. And um, you know what, because, because he can, and because he wants to play. So, you know what, it's, it's, it's fun to watch though. I got, I got all my, all my months covered basically Theo. So, you know, between going to a rink or going to a ball diamond, it's, it's a lot of fun. Who's the more tech savvy, you or Toby, when it comes to watching all the live streams this upcoming season with, you know, you got the WHL with Connor, you've got Center Ice with Morgan, or you've got to deal with, you know, whatever streaming service is using with Noah. I mean, you're going to be pretty savvy with what time's going on. And thankfully, YouTube's here now versus when you and I played 25 years ago. Maybe it wasn't. So probably a good thing to catch the boys on one of these streaming services. You know what? Um Toby's good at organizing the times and I'm good at getting the, the live streams up for you. So um, very thankful though, that Noah's um, both his college and this year's university are like, they televise. Uh, they actually had announcers last year, the last couple of years, actually in Barton um, is a junior college. Um, very good uh, TV broadcast through Noah. And then obviously with Morgan in the NHL, in the AHL, they're good too, and you know the the WHL live is coming. So yeah, it's it's definitely a lot of fun, but um, you know it's it, it does take a little bit of uh, organizing, and that's where Toby comes in. So we're going to talk more about the skill, the organizational skills, and time management skills you've been able to give the three boys. We're going to take a quick break here, Craig. We'll be right back here sure. on the ice. Back here on the ice with father, Craig Yeagy, coach, uh, confidant. I don't know. There's so many hats you could wear, Craig. I mean, we talked a little bit off air. We talked about a poem by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a wood and you travel the one less traveled by. They were their own trailblazers. Each one of them decided to do their own thing differently. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Noah because making that decision to – go play ball at Barton last year. And this year he's with a different team, a four-year school, like you said. When he takes that opportunity to say, you know what, I'm going to gravitate towards playing baseball and not play his year, his last year in the MJ or his year in the dub, do you think it was the right move for him? And are you enjoying the beginning of the season you get to watch him play ball? You know what, that's, a, again, another great question, Theo. Um, 
So I guess I'll start off by saying this. Absolutely. That, that was um, the best decision for Noah. And uh, there was no doubt in my mind that that's his passion. That was the right choice for him. Um, to, to watch it unfold, again, we just try and give the kids um, not the answer, but all the information that they can. And then they're going to have to make that decision. And we always say the phrase in our house is whatever decision you make, that's the right one. And, and that's it. And, you know, there is no regrets. There's no, you know, uh, looking back. Um, but um, there is, you know, there's going to be some challenges. There's going to be, you know, you know, he went out, uh, you know, like I said, in his grade 12 year in, in, in Okotoks, the baseball academy, you know, and there was still, you know, people wanting him to play hockey. And, you know what, that's, that's great, but it also throws some, what, questions in your mind thinking, geez, you know what, I'm 17, did I make the right decision here? You know, so super proud of him to to say, you know what? No, this is this is my focus now. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go after it. And you know, two years at Barton, uh, his third year now is is uh, is in Emporia, and he's doing real well. So um, very happy. Where is Emporia? I, I'm not familiar with that program. Yeah, so it's basically um, so Great Bend, Kansas, was about two two and a half hours. Um, I believe it's northwest of Wichita, and then um, Emporia, um, Emporia State University is, I want to say it's like an hour northeast of Wichita. So same, same uh, state, obviously, but uh, you move up to what I would consider like it, it kind of went from say. And the Cinnaboyne Community College, and then you go to for two years, which is a junior college down there excuse me, and then you uh, graduate and hope to get recruited by a four-year school, which is similar to like a, a U of M. Right. So um, that's kind of how I get it across in my little key brain. But yeah, so both Division II programs, um, you know, he got uh, really, really good scholarships. He's worked hard at school. Um, yeah, his, his, his focus on that regard is second to none. I'm going to say something funny. I expect you to laugh now. Did he click his heels twice to stay in Kansas? Uh, he did not, okay. but he, he loved it. He absolutely you knew that was loved coming, it, right? So, yeah, I did. I did. It's um, it, it is good though. It's a it's a phenomenal. They've treated him so well, Theo. We went down. Um, well, obviously, both years. His first year there, and then his second year, uh, we were able to go down and. You know, we just we just hope we can get down there uh, again sometime in the next you know year year and a half to to watch him uh, you know in his final year. So uh, yeah, it is it's it's pretty special down there though. The the baseball the programming down there is more like our hockey up here. Like they're they're fanatics and they like I said it's 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 awesome. You talk baseball, you talk about the South Midwest, you talk those states, you talk football. You're looking at Texas, California, baseball yeah. in California, football in Florida. I mean, there's hotbeds in southern southern states and truly if you're one of those baseball players you get into one of those colleges good on you uh yeah I agree. we're gonna go back to let's talk about morgan do you remember the where were you with him when he got drafted to the nhl and if so how excited or what did you expect where he got drafted well again it's it, it was all first for us theo so we didn't know um he didn't go to the draft right. which um he could have but again, we were we were kind of expecting a third, fourth round pick, uh, but you don't really know. Like you're just you're literally flying by the seat of your pants. We didn't know whether we were going to have a party, you know, a get together because if we didn't get drafted, then it kind of you know, um, you know, it's tough to be at your own draft party when you didn't get get drafted. So anyway, we just had some we had some friends and we had uh, immediate family and it was phenomenal. And uh, uh, yeah, it was it was just a you know, a complete joy to watch his name come across the ticker, you know, on TSN or whatever and, and, and watch it all. And yeah, it was, it was a pretty special moment. And again, his two biggest fans, honestly, whether they would admit it or not are his two brothers and, and they're all fans of each other. Like, um, you know, to, to watch them in a group chat or a FaceTime on, you know, when somebody does something well, 
like I said, we we know that they are their biggest fans. So it, it was fun. We were all there, and uh, yeah, never never missed a beat. So let's not rewind too much farther, but let's fast forward as well to Connor's draft into the WHL. How surprised were you that Winnipeg decided to take picks back to back with probably the two pro the two most uh, highlighted players eligible in the Western Hockey League draft at that year with Savoie and Connor? Well, definitely surprised, Steel. I mean, to 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 trade um, for for the second pick. Obviously, they had the first one, but to trade for the second pick, we were. Yeah, we were definitely shocked. It was, um, it was something that they had talked about, but you never, again, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. So they can tell you stuff. You take it in stride. Um, and again, it's something that we've tried to teach all our kids. It's it's still, you know, it's still just a number. Like a, a, again, the draft is 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 a good thing. But it's not the only thing. You still have to go produce. You still have to, you know, go and, you know, and play and be yourself and be humble and, and you know, but be proud of it, Theo. Like, you still want to be proud. But uh, it was. It was it was exciting. Um, it was, you know, definitely something that we didn't expect him to go that high. Um, with that said, again, very happy for him, very, you know, um, excited for him. But again, we're also trying to, you know, you're, you're 15, 16 year old, you know, you're trying to manage all those emotions. We're trying to keep them humble. And, and that's what his two brothers do, to be honest with you, is they keep them humble. And uh, again, it, it is, it, it is exciting. It's good. Uh, you don't want to downplay it, but you, you just want to keep it in check basically. And uh, we think he's done a, you know, uh, a pretty good job, but he's always learning every day on how to handle those expectations and, you know, and, um, you know, continue to be himself. And that's the big thing and not let it go to your head. Does Connor ever say that you were a better coach than James Patrick? <laughs> um, or is it, well, does he keep learning with James? Cause I, I know James and he's, he's a very, he, I think he was probably a great fit with that ice organization and how they've turned it around since they've moved from BC. Right. J James is intense. He's, um, he's, he, he can, I always find with coaching, you can, you can play at the highest levels. You can do all that, but if you can't get it across to 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 year old kids, again, you can have all, all the knowledge in the world, but I think James teaches. And I think that's the big thing for me is that I was, kind of the same um, in the fact that I didn't have his um, history of being in the NHL, but I, I love teaching. I love teaching the game and what I felt was to be the right way to play. And I think that's what James does really well in the fact that, you know, he takes a board out all the time. He'll stop a drill in practice and he'll, you know, he'll hold Connor accountable and, you know, because I did that, no, I'm nowhere near the coach James is because of the fact Connor would tell you that, you know what, I've heard it enough from dad. You know what I mean? So it's good to get other perspectives and whatnot. So um, like you said, J James is a very, very good fit in my eyes um, for that organization. Craig, how hard was it to take the coach hat off during the car ride home? and make sure you didn't put too much of a dad hat on when the boys didn't play well driving home after a game. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I learned early on, it was with, um, and you'll get a kind of a kick out of this, but it's a, it's a very humbling story for me as a dad and as a coach. So real quick, um, Noah was playing. He was probably about eight years old, 10 years old. And I think, I think Morgan would have been 12. Connor would have been like, four or five, somewhere in there. Anyway, we had a game in Strath. And I was uh, not happy with Noah's performance. And um, anyway, he came in the house crying. And Toby had said, well, what, what's wrong? And he literally, Theo, said, I'm not sure I want to play. Well, gee whiz. Like, I mean, I started crying. Morgan started crying. Like, we were sitting in our 
our family table. And we had, like I said, all five of us were crying. Connor was crying. He was four or five. He had no clue what was going on, but because everybody else was crying. And I was literally on the verge of losing, you know, Morgan's passion, Noah's passion, Connor's passion, maybe for the game that I loved and could have been, you know, really ruined uh, by what I was trying to do. And so from that point on, Theo, I said, okay, you know what, this is, this is not going to continue for me or else I'm going to lose my boys. At the end of the day, um, I had turned it around and uh, I learned from every single game on how to handle kids' uh, personalities and, and how to get the best out of them. And that was the biggest learning opportunity for me that I ever had. And it was, it was night and day. It was very tough, though. Like you said, it was very tough. It was humbling. I wish every parent could go through that because what I went through makes me a better coach, a better dad, and a better person, maybe not in that order, than anything that I've ever done in my entire life. So to answer that, um, it was hard in the beginning, um, you know, because I, I just wanted them to be successful. But that that had nothing to do with it at the end of the day. Um you know, uh, so when it came down to drive home now, I have a little chit chat, ask them how it went. And that's it. But we just, we talk about everything else. And, um, you know, and hopefully I've, Toby and I have tried to get them to analyze their, their, their themselves in terms of how the game went internally and be honest with themselves. If you, if you played like crap, then admit that you played like crap, you know, and, and do that. But if you played well, be humble, but know internally that, yeah, no, I played well. And so, like I said, it, 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 was, a, it was a difficult thing early on, Theo, but I'm, I'm proud enough to say that, uh, you know, it took a real strong life lesson to make that change. You mentioned the boys being their best fans for one another. This pandemic has brought in so much, you know, difficulty and strife and heartache and we could talk about the negative storylines till we go blue. Yeah. But Craig, you've talked about off air about the most important, the blessing in disguise, so to speak, of having the empty nest filled earlier this year and how excited it was to have not only the three boys, but their extent part of their extended families as well join you during this time. And how important and how impressive was it for you to see all the guys hanging out? We live in some old times being the kids again. Yeah. And, and again, I think you hit it in the head there. They, they literally were each other's biggest fans and yeah, they were, they were kids again. I mean, Morgan's fiance was there again. They ended up buying a dog. So they had a dog, um, you know, a brand new pup that was what, eight, 10 weeks old. I mean, so we added that to the mix. Um, so it, it was, it was fantastic. The grocery bill, mind you, was through the roof. Okay. But again, we wouldn't change it for the world feel. I mean, again, I said early on before the interview was the board games, the card games, the, the catchphrases and, and the getting mad at each other and, and chasing each other around the house because, you know, they ticked each other off. Well, that's, that's normal. And I mean, there was no downtime, like from, from the minute they got up, whether they had school, they would meet at the table, you know, uh, they'd all work out and, uh, you know, we'd get together for, you know, uh, breakfast, lunch and dinner. And it was absolutely fabulous. And now, like you said, Toby and I are back to empty nesters and we have to be organized to watch all the all the game times. Well, I appreciate that because it brings a bit of a, of a clamped feeling in my own life because I remember those days missing brother and not able to enjoy those old stories or hitting the posts back in the day when you get older. But we're going to take one more quick break, Craig. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anyone else watching. We're going to talk about this upcoming season, how excited it is to use those streaming devices that Craig and Toby have figured out how to use. So stay with us here on the ice. At Super 8 Winnipeg West, we have your comfort in mind with free Wi-Fi and free daily Superstart breakfast. We also have guest laundry facilities, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and a jetted hot tub. Sleep well in a spacious guest room equipped with plush new bedding, a 50-inch flat screen HD TV, microwave, mini refrigerator, and Keurig coffee maker. Or book a suite with a kitchen, 
ideal for extended stays. Super 8 Winnipeg West, located just inside the perimeter on I want to thank Craig Greeky very much for joining me tonight on the ice. Craig, you've been such a fantastic person to talk about, not just hockey, but sports and raising boys off the ice and the accountability and integrity that you've given these three young gentlemen who are representing Strathclair, Manitoba so well. We get to talk about the fun stuff now, the return to play. <laughs> now, Noah's been at baseball for the last two or three weeks. She said, what have you noticed about him and his baseball and how impressive has he been with the startup of his ball career in 21? Feel uh, something went wrong with the internet there. Can you repeat your question? If you don't sure. mind, please? So Noah started his career or started his season a couple of weeks back. Tell me what it's been like watching him play ball. And have you talked about missing hockey at all? Or is he not even thinking about hockey? He's thinking about summertime, green grass, and, you know, the amount of spits he's going to eat in the in the ballpark <laughs> yeah you know what it, it is exciting I, I again i i was a baseball guy i love watching baseball and it is exciting to see him you know get so excited for his game game days and and um and whatnot down there is yeah it, it, it's that's what kind of brings back a little bit of normal normalcy feel so yeah to watch that it, it, it's phenomenal and again we we toby and i well, this just this past uh, weekend, like he plays basically a doubleheader on a Saturday and a single game, best out of three on the Sunday, single game on Sunday, sorry. And so we're pretty much locked up for the weekend, like every weekend. So um, it is, it, it's it's a lot of fun. And, and again, we, we look forward to watching them. Morgan played in the bubble last year a little bit during playoffs. How was that for him and the stories he told you versus playing this 21 season now? being with Carolina and Chicago this year. Talk about some of those challenges he faced and how excited he is to be back on the ice uh, in the Carolina uh, franchise. You know what? Uh, the bubble was such a unique experience, Theo, that uh, he's got, excuse me, he's got lots of stories. Um, you know, probably some of the biggest challenges is not having the ability to, to go out and to go out you know, for, to a restaurant with the guys. I mean, there was restaurants in the bubble and yes. Okay. But they really want you to be aware of the fact that you shouldn't be socializing, you know, and you, you can, but again, it's not as if it's, um, you know, really in, encouraged, but that's part of it, right? Being in the bubble, being on a team, you want to hang out with the guys like that. The camaraderie is, is as important as, as the game itself. So, you know, that um, experience and having all those playoff games in the bubble, to me, was surreal. I mean, to, to, to watch them play and, and um, you know, to, to watch the coaches have the confidence in them is is phenomenal, right? And that's what you want. Heading into this year, um, again, they're, they're so deep right now. Carolina themselves have made a few trades and whatnot. So he's maybe not getting the 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 games that he wants, but he's he's still positive. He's you know loving life where he is. Um, you know he got sent down. He did real well when he got sent down in in the AHL. Got Player of the Week. You know is right back up. So uh, again, it's about um, you know putting in the work, putting in your time, and paying your dues, and and trying to learn. Uh, you know every time you step on the ice, every time you step in the rink, you're learning from. You know, guys like Stahl and and Aho and all those guys that are literally at your fingertips now. And again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. He's, he's he wants to be playing. Like he's you know he's just like everybody else. You know, you have a job, you want to be doing your job. So um, you know, he's fighting every day, tooth and nail, to try and get back in the lineup for sure. We talked about Connor's coach being James Patrick. Morgan's got a pretty good coach there in Carolina too. Rod's a very um, a very much a player's coach um, and, you know, holds you accountable. We'll tell you, you know what, you played real good or, you know what, you did not have a good game today and has those expectations. And so, again, for Morgan, 
I think it's perfect. It's a good fit. It's uh, it's definitely something that uh, you know we've Toby and I have tried to instill in them that you know you are accountable. So when you step on the ice, you have to be you know uh, ready to go. So he's he's learning every day, and he's you know understanding what it's what it's uh, going to take to stay in the lineup. Connor is now in Regina with the team. Yep. Day nine or day eight of quarantine, whatever day it is, but he's playing this weekend. They start this weekend, correct? Correct. Yeah, they play on the 13th, I think, Theo. Yep. So they had a week of quarantine, and then this week is practice. So they've actually – so he's been in the bubble for going on two weeks here. So, um, yeah, and again, it's – for for that age group of kids, Theo, the, the – the challenge is, is to keep them occupied, right? Yeah, okay, they have their Xboxes and their PS4s and, and whatnot, but you can only do that so of um, keeping them occupied, whether it's, you know, Zoom meetings or whether it's, you know, I think they had a – Oh, a comedy night. I think uh, uh, they had some comedians in there via Zoom. So they're doing everything in their power to keep them occupied. So, again, another u- unique experience that you'll never, ever be able to take away. And, uh, you know, you touched on it before is about time management. You know, he's still got school. So he has to manage his time that way. He's got to be, you know, uh, he's got to make sure he's attending you know, uh, the workouts, uh, you know, he's got practice. So then he's got homework. Then, you know, they've got all these other extracurricular stuff. So he's got to figure it out. Craig, you bring up school and it's one of the, one of the foundational things I stress tremendously with student athletes, the importance of education and academics. Hockey was here now. Hockey is the present. Will it be the future for these boys? We don't know. Baseball will be the future for Noah. We don't know. How important is their academic career as well as their athletic career growing up and making sure they've got that opportunity saying, I've taken this as far as I can. Now I need to rely on my studies and realize, realize that I now need to be educated to for the rest of my life. Right. hundred percent. And, um, and that's honestly where Toby has done such a tremendous job of trying to instill that into, into all three. Um, you know, obviously, you and I both know uh, that when you're 16, 17 years old, school is probably not the first priority, right? At least, and again, I speak for a lot of us. With that said, though, um, you want you still have to present it so that they are excited about it. They are understanding that just exactly what you said. You know, it's such a small percentage that move on um, to get paid to play a sport. So let's be honest. Let's let's go get an education, um, and and understand that you know what having an education also plays two two really critical roles. To me, one is the actual education part, but also keeps your mind off of the sport itself. Because what a lot of people don't know is that there's so much downtime in hockey that you can actually make up things in your mind and get in your own head and, and think, God, I should be playing or why am I playing with this guy or geez, I should be hitting the ball or how come I'm not doing this? So it takes you away from thinking all the time, if that makes sense to you. And, and so it really gives you an outlet to do something else, keep your mind active, but also just do something else and get away from the game, whatever it is, could be volleyball, could be curling, whatever. And, you know, with the ice, they encourage all, their players, regardless of whether they're graduated or not, to take some courses. And I think they all have to. You know, Morgan, for an example, you know, we've ta- talked to him about the same thing. You know, he's taken a couple courses through, um, uh, what is it, the uh, uh, Athabasca, you know, and done that. You know, he's picked up a guitar, trying to learn his guitar on his own. You know, just that free time, to me, allows you to, you know, probably grow a lot more than just sitting there playing a video game. So, again, not saying that everybody will enjoy it, but it does give them a, a, a definite outlet for sure. So Morgan's not planning the wedding then, right? <laughs> Jeez, I don't want I don't want to speak out of turn here, but you, no you, comment, you know, no comment, no comment. Yeah, exactly. Emma Emma is doing. She's graduating too. She writes her nurses exam here next week. Right. Um, 
And so, yeah, they're, they, they both play a role, but uh, no, Morgan is probably more of a, um, a, an outside organizer than an internal organizer. How's that? Do you ever think Craig, I mean, what if the boys didn't play hockey or what if they didn't play baseball? What do you think they'd be doing right now? Okay. So this, this, we have a weird family, number one, because in our group chat, we almost have like a weekly or monthly question that comes up. And this has come up. Okay. It is, is, you know, what, what would you be doing? You know, if you, if you didn't play hockey or ball, well, you know, Morgan would say, and, and we said it couldn't be sports. Okay. And so, um, Morgan, I think, would be probably some sort of physiotherapist, kinesiology, you know, something like that, because he loves, you know, the workings of a body, you know, how you can transform it, you know, something like that. Noah is going to be doing exactly what he wants to be doing, and that's teaching. He, he is a teacher at heart. He's got such a, a big heart, um, wants to teach kids, is a very kind soul, uh, you know, person. And Connor, he just keeps saying that he would just be – you know, either a football player or, you know, or a basketball player, he'd be doing something else. And so with that said, he's, he's got such a knack um, in terms of approaching people. And we, we said he would be in a marketing or sales, you know, type of scenario. And, and he agrees. So it's pretty neat. And that's, that's one of the first times we've ever asked that question to you. So thanks. It's uh, yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty cool to, to talk to them about that too. So. When is Morgan going to financially pay back the favors? Because uh, I know Connor's not there yet. I know Noah's not there yet, but I know Morgan is a little bit. But do you ever think about how much money you would have saved, not with Geico, but how much money you saved <laughs> traveling and the gear and the No, I, I, never, I know it's, you want to I never want to think about it. Yeah, yeah I don't want to think about it because it's priceless. priceless. I, I mean, it truly is. And and. Toby and I feel the same way. Like, I mean, there's lots of our friends that have the boats and the quads and, and, and everything else. And that's fabulous. That is phenomenal. But our boat is a, you know, a pair of skates, uh, you know, a $400 glove. Um, and, and we have no problem doing it because that's their passion. And um, ultimately, to answer your question wholeheartedly, we've never stopped and thought about it. And I think we'd have an ulcer the size of my truck, though, if I ever did, because... <laughs> And especially now, because the expenses are like hockey sports in general is is really going, you know, in the wrong direction to get to get kids involved. But that's a whole nother that's a whole nother conversation. Let me ask you that real quick. I mean, in your eyes, how do you mean like with this current almost year anniversary of being locked down? How are you going to? Or how do you think the return to participation of all sport? is going to be created because there is a lot of naysay, a lot of questioning, a lot of what ifs when it comes to bringing back the players to even participate and the cost that that matter too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think there's other challenges too, that are, you know, that are coming forth through the pandemic, such as basically freedom. Right to go and well, if I want to go camping or quadding, I, I can go, and the freedom just to go for a hike, you know, instead of going to little Johnny's or little Susie's ball practice or hockey practice or soccer practice. So, I think that in general, we're finding that, especially in communication with a lot of people out rurally, we might find that to be a challenge. Is in, when we're starting up. There's not only going to be, just like you said, the added expenses of sanitization, you know, separate rooms. Um, so which in turn means um, higher paid employees, which has to be reimbursed and kicked back to the user and higher ice fees and, and stuff like that. So and it's again, it's not only hockey, it's it's baseball like they're they're literally it's it, it could be the new norm. I hope not. But yeah, that is a challenge to you. And I think. I think it's realistic. I think it's a scary thought because I think we're in such a great direction in terms of, at least out here anyway, getting kids to play sports. 
and you know baseball like our, our numbers out here really have been so increasing with um you know with the last 10 years with baseball well now all of a sudden you know i'm not sure we're gonna i'm not sure we're gonna have the same numbers and um you know it's 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 gut-wrenching to say because again i want these kids playing uh, it doesn't matter what sport just sports in general get out and do something okay i'm gonna give you a quick fast five here to end off this interview <laughs> oh, so, good. yeah um number question one who had the best shot between the three boys morgan who threw the ball hardest connor okay uh when it comes time to having the three boys home for dinner who's making dinner and who's what are they making noah hands down um morgan will cook noah's um noah took actually some culinary stuff in in high school um is always looking for recipes so yeah noah would be cooking he would probably um just trying to figure out he's he loves a, a a real good casserole like a chicken casserole um does that real well but again you you give him a recipe he'll make it morgan's good um but just not to the extent of noah connor fortunately he's got his dad's genes and uh you know what I, I, Eggs and toast is is top of the list for him and I. I can't remember what I asked him the same question two years ago. I don't remember what he said. I think he said uh, pasta and chicken was his pregame meal. So like yeah. I, that's ninety percent of the answer for kids right. these days. I think he's uh, actually pierogies. Field. Hey, there you go. Hey, on. Yeah, and go so figure. Make sure you pass those recipes down because those ones are, I've passed mine to my son. So it's uh, it's yeah. a well well earned tradition at the house yeah. here no doubt good call we had too many progies in my day which is why i didn't make <laughs> well, big leagues. i think we all have <laughs> the pandemic Do you remember, has a uh morgan's first pair of skates and were they handed down to noah uh good question no um i was always a big believer theo that skates and helmets um for the most part skates for sure were never handed down i always I never went real expensive. I never went real inexpensive. I kind of found that middle of the road. I always got them their own skates. Uh, so they always had their skates. Everything else though, again, for the most part, I always said helmets and, and, and skates were the two things that I never handed down. And for the most part, I was true to that. Everything else though, like I can remember, I think it was Noah had the smallest um, gloves like out of anybody and they look like just like mitts on them, hockey gloves. And, and I'm going, God, I need to get you some, you know, some new gloves. And they were like, he used to get razzed about them all the time because, you know, other kids were using like 13 inch gloves and he had like a nine, you know, and it was crazy. It looked so small, but yeah, we, we, we tried to do that as, as much as we could obviously to cut costs and, and whatnot. And, you know, um, sticks was another thing, you know, Morgan, used was pretty much the last person to have a composite stick uh we made him use wood you know because it was easy um so uh, like i said and times have changed though now theo like i mean again the you know the sticks are better the helmets are better the skates are better everything's better but <clears throat> that was just our way of you know cutting corners that's all last question for you craig how did you decide or how did the boys decide which hand they would shoot uh, you know, that's always, that's always an interesting question to ask dads because it's, do you put yeah. the strong hand at the top and you put it in the middle or was it because the older brother had right-handed sticks? <laughs> no, it was literally, I just put a stick in their hand, gave them a ball and they, they decided. I, I let them kind of go wherever they decided to go. That's why Morgan's a right-handed shot. Noah's a right-handed shot, but left in everything else. Like he's a, he kicks the ball with his left hand. He throws with his left hand. He writes with his left hand. But he shoots right. Um, Connor is shoots left. Him and I shoot left, but he does everything right-handed. So um, I just I just literally kind of let them do their own thing. I, I I never tried to force them into you know whether you're golfing you know geez you need to be a right-handed golfer or a left-handed shot over here or whatever. I, I didn't do any of that. So I I don't have any wise you know. Um, wisdom for anybody but no i, I just kind of let them do their own thing and 
you know, whatever they whatever they gravitated to, they did. I'm still waiting to hear what you put in that water, though. That's what I want to find out. <laughs> Strathclair I mean, water. Strathclair water. The, if Jackson Springs got nothing on Strathclair <laughs> water. Let me tell exactly, you. Exactly, Phil, no doubt. Craig, I want to thank you very much for joining me. I uh, really appreciate the conversation. Great to get the insight on uh, just, you know, what this pandemic brought. And like you said, the blessing in disguise, having everybody home. And again, thank you for sh shining a bit of light on the opportunity for all three getting back to the sports they love and doing here in 21. Well, I just want to say thank you, Theo. You know, you want, you reached out. Um, you've been such a, a, a great interviewer with Connor. And uh, like you said, I, I appreciate what you're doing in support of our family and what you do. It's, um, it's definitely a, a tremendous thing you're doing. So keep it I up. I appreciate the words, Craig. Thank you very much. I look forward to chatting. Once everything gets back to normal, maybe I'll get Morgan and Connor in a live one on two on one, perhaps. And <laughs> maybe Noah can throw me a curveball and break my hand. How about yeah, that? Absolutely. Well, they would be they would be a challenge to, to interview all three of them because uh, uh, the, the chirping might get a little out of hand. I'm okay with that. I mean, I'm totally <laughs> down with, you know, a team edge, do perfect kind of thing where, right. yeah. you know, we rock and roll three holes on a golf course and we just mic them up and see what happens. Absolutely. That would be fun. There we that go. We'll just, fun. we'll just drive the golf carts, right, Craig? Wow. Yeah, we could do that. We'd be, we'd be laughing until, uh, till dusk. That's for sure. Absolutely. I look forward to that. Craig Geeky, uh, father of three wonderful boys, baseball, hockey, and a tremendous dad to all of them. And, of course, we can't leave mom out. She's the glue to the whole thing. I mean, 100%. we didn't give her any respect at all, but we're going to give her props now because without Good. mom, I, yep. mean, I mean, any household knows. The bottom line is mom is the glue. You betcha. And the meals, the the organizing, the the everything. And, you know, like her, her mom and dad as well were, were such a big part of, of the kids' lives and still are, but – you know, between her and um, well, her sisters in Winnipeg, she teaches in Winnipeg. Uh, we stayed there, um, you know, Theo. So for all our stuff in Winnipeg, whether it be ball hockey um, and all the other things, we would stay there. So, uh, like I said, uh, it, it's it, it's a family, you know, raising a family, and we truly mean that. And uh, like I said, it's it's she's Toby is 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 the rock, the glue, whatever you want to call it. She is definitely. Uh, the number one person in our family, for sure. Craig, I want to thank you very much for your time and uh, look forward to hearing and seeing how the gentlemen play the rest of their season. Again, the WHL starts up this weekend. Morgan, is he playing with the Hurricanes now? He's, he's on a taxi now, squad right? right now, Theo, just, okay. uh, again, waiting his turn. So he's traveling with the boys, and like you said, yeah. Noah's playing ball. He's got the best of every world. I mean, Carolina weather's nice, too. I don't mind it either. Yeah. Carolina's Carolina's nice. He Morgan was golfing today, but like I said, you can't beat playing ball. I think it was they went to they traveled about three hours for ball this past weekend. It was like twenty one degrees. You know, Beautiful. nothing nothing major, right? Twenty one so, Celsius. Let's not say twenty one Fahrenheit. A whole uh, different correct. Story. Twenty one so Celsius. Celsius. It was gorgeous. It was drop yeah. dead gorgeous. So, <laughs> Craig, again, thank you so much. Have a great rest yep. of the evening. Thanks, Theo. Appreciate it, man. Right on. I was Craig Geeky, father of, again of Morgan, Noah, and Connor Geeky all over this world playing baseball and a little bit of hockey. Thanks for joining us here on ASTV. We'll be here Tuesdays and Thursday nights at 6 o'clock Central. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the evening, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.